Good afternoon. It is Monday, 27 April 2020. And with me today is Frank Steffen. He's the editor of Allgemeine Zeitung. Today is our 38th update mm -hmm. about COVID-19 in, in Namibia. It's also, Frank, the 31st day of our 38 days of lockdown. So uh, a week that still, re uh, still remains. I'll be taking over from Frank, who handled last week. So He's passing on the baton to me, Frank. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's exciting times for us, obviously, as journalists. But uh, for others, it's, it's probably high time to get this behind you. And very important, always keep sanitizing the hands. So, Frank, I go a big deal also, as well as myself. And it's like with the social distancing, and we'll see today, Frank, again, in some footage we're going to show you, it's still a problem. Um, people are still suffering with it, and if we're suffering with social distancing, uh, I presume we, we still do not wash our hands as often as we should. What do you think? Well, that's a big thing, is it not? This is about, it, it must be a natural discipline. And, and uh, let's face it, um, we actually wrote about it in Algemeine today. If people don't start uh, accepting this as the new normal, um, the government will basically be forced to continuously repeat these sort of exercises. Now, it's easy for us all to say it's an economic impact and it's not fair and it's not that, but that's where we come in. We need to assist them. To start off with, we're going to show you the latest data now and we're starting with just the number of tests. Now, what we are showing you is the numbers as they were on the 25th of April, which was Saturday uh, evening at 8 o'clock, Frank, and we see still there confirmed 16. The negative results increased with 29 to 689, 43 discarded tests, and uh, that four were still pending. So total samples tested was plus 30, 828. It's quite small at, there at the bottom, Frank, but I want to point out the average daily tests originally from 13 March was 16 per day, mm. but at least in that last seven days up to Saturday, including Saturday, uh, we've gone up to 29 physical tests for yeah. different people being completed. It's almost uh, a doubling. Is that positive, do you think, or are we Look, still not close to where we should be? I think any improvement is obviously welcome, but it's not good enough, let's face it. I mean, uh, we all listen to the news, we listen to what's happening on the other side. We hear that, that uh, England, for example, is aiming for something like 100,000 a day and only getting to 50-odd. In fact, last week they only got to 45, I think. 45,000 as opposed to 100,000. Now, the same applies to us. I mean, obviously, our numbers are lower in terms of population. But if we have said that we need to test 1,100 per day, then we're not even close to where it should be. And uh, we need to up this game because, I mean, that's what we said last week as well, was as long as government tells us we don't have reliable data and we have to prolong this sort of lockdown period, uh, the onus is on them to make sure that the data actually is being gathered. And that can only be gathered if we have the testing. Uh, let's take a quick peek again just at the map. This shows how many tests has been done in the different districts in Namibia. So it's not the regions, uh, but it's only uh, commas, uh, obviously, in Wintuk district. And you also see the Swakopmund and then the one in the north there. That has more than 11 tests. Uh, so, Frank, they, they explained it, I think, last week and said uh, uh, regional testing can only start once all of these machines have been calibrated. So, hopefully, uh, it's that what that they're working on. Let's look quickly also at quarantine stats. Uh, as they were on Saturday evening total, they're still in quarantine, 222. Total people discharged 355. So if you put that together, we've had 577 people quarantined in Namibia. And uh, Omosati, the eight is quite new the last couple of days, yeah, as well as is Oshana has got one person in quarantine now. The other regions, you will see the, the differences there. On um, Saturday, 11 new people were quarantined and a total of five released. And then at the bottom, people can see also the, the A3 recovery that has mm. also been uh, announced, uh, bringing our recovery rate to 50 
uh, 50%. Frank, I think a big issue with everyone, a businessman phoned me from, from, from the coast a short while ago, asking when are we now going to hear when um, the lockdown is going to end or how is it going to work starting from the 5th of May? Exactly. Uh, it's really, it's ending on midnight on the 4th, so obviously 5th is the day where everybody thinks it's going back to normal. It's not. Uh, that's what we had uh, brought to you the other day uh, when we explained that the, the permits, for example, for, for essential services have been issued for the, for the, for the whole uh, length of the uh, state of emergency. So nothing is going back to normal just because the lockdown ends. What it does say is as from the end of the lockdown, government needs to now tell us what will happen next. How will we phase the business back in? How will we make sure that if new cases come up, how do we manage them? So, so there is a bit of planning that needs to be done very urgently because this week only has four days and half of it mm. is gone already. Yeah, because it's a long weekend coming. Yeah. If you are watching now live on uh, Facebook, please ask your question. Uh, uh, let's look quickly at a slide, and it's similar to what South Africa is going to do mm. post, uh, post the, the hard lockdown. There's levels you can see. South Africa also have five levels, and it's basically determined that five is the most strict, high virus spread and or low readiness, and level one is the, the, uh, the, uh, the least risk in terms of spread so it's a very good health system that's prepared and there's been very little spread now namibia frank we've seen very little spread yeah well that's it and uh, the cabinet usually sits on tuesday so uh, do you think we may be going to hopefully wednesday or thursday year from government what's going to happen from the fifth or <laughs> yeah uh, I think do you think uh, hopefully they don't wait until after the mm. long weekend yeah, look, I, I, I can't imagine they will. Um, but uh, knowing our president by now, we'll probably have a very late press conference tomorrow afternoon sometime. And uh, look, to be dead honest, as long as we do have one, as long as they start giving us guidelines, because there are some of these business people that are really desperate. Never mind the business people. That's, that's the one part of the equation. I think the biggest part of the equation, and it really becomes an issue with us moving around and, 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 and having journalists on the spots and doing all these regional clips, we can see how desperate people are becoming out there. People that are not used to having to go and stand in a line for a freebie now have to go there and they stand for six hours and they're not told, sorry, not today, maybe tomorrow. You know, this is hard times and it's, it's, it's really, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's saddening to see that we're playing with these people. There's nothing that gets you down as much as insecurity if you don't know how to feed your children. Yes, for business example, just to tell what uh, the gentleman told these the, this morning. So he's expecting maybe his business can open up, uh, but he doesn't know if it's the 5th or the 6th or whenever it will yeah. be. And he needs to order, place orders, etc. So that's a, a, a why business urgently know, uh, need to know. We also know that uh, there's no specific detail yet on the whole issue of the loan and salary subsidy and exactly yeah, how, and when, when can how that will work. work. Yeah. So yes, there's uh, many things that still has to, 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 to be sorted out hopefully soon this week. Yeah. Uh, we're going to play you our first two inserts. First of all, this morning at the National Communication Center for COVID-19, the topic was food and nutrition. So Jochenan could see a uh, they recorded a, court, a short clip there, which we will share. And after that, a message again from a sports personality. And today it's Tiberius Lombard, and he's also a footballer. That should buy. How is COVID-19 impacted, impacted on food purchasing, perceptions of food safety, and why is nutrition and food safety important during this time of COVID-19? Hmm. Um, I think one thing that I think we observed is that um, luckily there's no shortage of food in the shops, so there's no impact directly on, on that. Um, however, how it impacts people is in terms of their the job losses or reduction in salaries or other ways of not having an in income that people are not able to afford buying food. Um, at the same time, 
uh, we can see a rise in initiatives, either by individuals, by groups, by companies, by the government, to really make efforts to uh, get food to people. And what I notice is that people are also more and more aware that it shouldn't just be one staple food, but it should be a variety of food, as Charlotte said, including fish, including vegetables. So whenever these um, packages of food are, are being put together and distributed, there should be this variety of food in it because it does strengthen our immune system. And my hope is that all of these initiatives um, really sustain themselves even after COVID because what I think we can see is that COVID opened our eyes that the world before COVID was not fair and not equal at all. So I think what it, what it does, it highlights that we have been living in a society that is highly unequal, where a lot of people could not afford food. Um, but we also see the capacity of us as a society to be able to share and to provide. So it's not a matter of we don't have enough food, it's a matter of how it is distributed. And my hope is that we collaboratively as a society work around distributing that food. So I feel that is how COVID impacted our relationship to food and our realization that we really need to share more and to care more and to be more aware about food and to really make sure everybody is food secure and everybody has nutritious food on the table. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Tiberius Lomba. If they call me Bryce, Namibia International. I play my football in Zambia for a team called a sensational Zanako. I just want to let you guys know that this convict is it has very very hard and it's not a job. So I would advise all of us to stay home, stay clean, wash, wash our hands with hand sanitizer, <laughs> with hand sanitizer, and yeah, we can always work out at home. So this 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 is a hard time for all of us, but all shall be well. So let us stay home and uh, let us keep social distance. Ayo. A very positive message again mm -hmm. there from uh, one of our sports personalities in Namibia. But Frank, the whole thing about food and food shortages. Is, is huge. I mean, yeah. yesterday when the governors gave their reports, I listened to that, and basically all the regions have huge shortages of, of food. Yeah, and it is really a catch-22 situation, like this Mr. Shanik was saying there, that uh, people are coming forward to help. But let's not fool ourselves. It's only a small drop in the ocean. Uh, most of the people that we see are the ones that are coming forward and asking, what about all those guys in the rural areas? And some of these settlements are deep in, you know, they don't even have the money to drive. And it's, it's like somebody said the other day to me, he says, no, not he says, we actually played the clip. Um, you, you actually calculate it. If somebody has to come in from the rural area, you will spend uh, 300 bucks to come into one of the centers. Okay, then only to find out, no, today there's no food. Now he has to return. So he's spending another 300 bucks. So he spent 600 bucks of the 750 income grant that's given to him. So how much food can he buy with 150, especially considering the fact that he's come back home empty-handed? Because he can't stay at the other side. No, he's not allowed to. So this thing is a bad situation, and I just feel we're moving too slow on that. And now, if you're watching and you have first-hand experience in terms of the whole food issue, also give us your comments. Frank, two questions. Uh, the first one, I think, is a bit difficult to ask, uh, answer. Nolini Rasmus from uh, Irongo region wants to know what must the construction industry, they've been locked down as well, do to mm -hmm. prepare now? And, and uh, I think <laughs> we'll have to wait. It, it depends exactly. on what government says now. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, do you think they should allow construction again? It's a very hard hit um, sector. Look, and that's the, I think this is the biggest argument. And, and, and I see it's an argument not only here, it's an argument overseas as well. Um, do we wait for people to die of hunger or do we wait for them to die of COVID? Now, obviously, that's a fine balance that we need to find. And it's not an easy balance to find. 
And I would seriously say, allow it, but just get measures into place. Make sure that we somehow manage the work situation. I mean, we had to change it in a match to make sure that we're not too many people in our newsroom. Uh, some work from home, some come in as they need to come in, and so on. So obviously there is a change, and uh, everybody is touched by it, and everybody's got to attune. There's a whole activity around it, and I'm sure in, in construction, People are willing to do the same as long as they can start upping their game again and uh, you know, earn income so that they can pay the salaries because then half the problem is gone. Another question, if I come from Europe, can I quarantine myself at my house or at home? That question is asked by Estomi Wandara. Now, uh, Estomi, unfortunately, you can't do that. Uh, mm. Initially, just when lockdown started, they did tell people uh, or allow them to do that because there weren't facilities basically yeah, front. Yeah. but now it is mandatory 14-day uh, quarantine at the state facility so the moment either yeah. if you are lucky enough to, to come in whenever that's going to happen with an airplane again yeah. or arrive via road from South Africa or from Angola or Zambia as a Namibian citizen you'll have to you'll have to go into official quarantine. Especially because most of our cases have been imported from outside. So, so that makes sense, really. Uh, the uh, the self-isolation only applies to those people who've been in contact with somebody who's been diagnosed, uh, diagnosed with that sickness. Um, then if you were somewhere in the vicinity of that person, you can self-isolate just to, to play sure. But the, the, the quarantine certainly applies to anybody coming from outside, especially when they come from the more, uh, uh, what do they call it, endangered areas and so on. Feel free uh, to ask your questions as well. Up next, we're going to uh, the regions. Now, it's a bit of a longer clip than usual. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to introduce what you're going to see. It's not going to be in the specific order necessarily. You'll see some of their vendors and how they were operating uh, yesterday and over the weekend here in Katatura in Vintuk. That's a contribution by Micheline Navati says. Um, Kenya Kambawe up in Rundu. He visited the checkpoint at Devundu to see how things are going there. And uh, Justicia Shipena, she spoke to a lady who is running a takeaway business at Chinatown here in Vintuk. And she explains how uh, COVID-19 has affected her business. Also, uh, there was a protest on Saturday at the regional council office here in Vintuk uh, about the whole issue of food. And we'll show you uh, Governor Laura McLeod Kachirwa's message about the whole food issue that was uh, filmed by Denver Kisting and also uh, uh, Frank I want people to watch when we show you what's now happening this morning in Valfus Bay where people are queuing to register for food look uh, uh, that was filmed by Leandria Lode look at the queues look at the lack of social distancing etc and uh, then also a couple of clips about the two roadblocks north of Okania to the way uh, on, on, on the way to Chivarongo and Swakopmund, and that was uh, filmed by our get to uh, Greg. After that, we'll come back and have some uh, comment on and discussion on these scenes. So, this is the scene currently in Clement Kapoor Street um, in Katatura, informal settlement in Ventuk. As you can see, um, great amount of traffic moving around people standing around um very little so so social distancing and um, that's being adhered to um in a moment um we will also see the street vendors who are still continuing with their business even though we are currently finding ourselves in lockdown and only the markets are able to operate within this time but these are the street vendors who are still currently busy This is the Divundu checkpoint. What's happening here is that vehicles are being stopped, whereby people have to provide their permits of traveling. For those who don't have permits, they are asked to park their vehicles and then they try to get some kind of uh, perm permission to travel.
as well as screening is taking place inside people are being screened by the various officials inside The queue is not long as you can see, but according to the officials, there were a number of vehicles that passed through here, most having the permission they needed. Yeah, as an owner of this business, uh, AS and take and catering in Chinatown, there is more challenge uh, this time for lockdown because there is no customer, we will not get anything. I uh, will just having a power so that they can open every day so that they can get anything to buy for the bread. Good morning Namibia, we are here at the roadblock checkpoint just outside of Okahanya as you can see a truck has just pulled up uh, and uh, the occupants are being screened right now standard procedure on a normal Monday during the time of Corona COVID-19 in Namibia uh, where a special care is being taken so that uh, the virus can be prevented from spreading but in general the road here on the way to the coast is quite quiet according to the officials and uh, everything is well under control Um, hi, I'm Deputy Commissioner Machila. I'm the Head of Community Policing at the Crime Prevention Directorate, Namibian Police Force. Where are we? We are at the Okahanja Otivarongo traffic uh, roadblock. And um, as you can see, it's uh, looking reasonably very quiet. Um, unlike what it, what it was like a week ago when we had the extension of the lockdown, when it was announced, it was just chaos. Now we're very happy to say that things are really quiet right now at the roadblock. The only challenge you have now are the mini buses. Um, those, that one there has been, we told the, the, the driver that he cannot proceed because he doesn't have the papers, the permits to drive and to transport uh, passengers. And that goes the same for the one that's on the other side of the, of the road there as well. So, but otherwise it's, it's reasonably very quiet. I see you've got tippy taps here. Yes, we're very happy to say that we've got tippy taps, it's very easy. Um, this is for people when they come for their screening, all you have to do is to wash your hands, it's very easy. And um, because we also have to maintain um, a, a clean environment here as well. You know, we also, the safety of the police officers is important. Um, when people come here, they also need to sanitize their hands. If they don't sanitize their hands, they just need to wash their hands as well. And also maintain the one meter distance, social distancing is important. And also when they talk to our police officers there, when they take down their details, and as well as the officials from the Ministry of Health, when they also take down the details, asking them various questions. 
um, they also need to ensure that they, they keep that distance as well. I don't know, did you go through the whole process or get it? I'm about to. Okay, did you wash your hands before you started with this interview? Uh, I washed my hands when I got out the car. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> And did you have your, your, your temperature done? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Right. Did you, what was the questions that they asked you then? No, I haven't answered their questions, but in the previous one, they asked me where I came from. Yeah. And uh, just the travel history. Okay. And symptoms. Okay. All right. So I don't know what else you want to know. No, that's perfect. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Okay. okay. Um, so we are anticipating that there could be quite a lot of travelers on the road. For those of you who are traveling, we appeal to you, please, when you come to the checkpoint and it is very busy, we are requesting that you at least um, are patient because the process does take a little bit of some time because you have to go through screening and questions will be asked and so forth. So just please be patient and also be polite with the police officers. Remember, if you want people to treat you professionally, you also need to be professional on how you talk to people. And then all in all, also make, make sure that when you come here, when you're traveling, with I'm going to a funeral for example, make sure that you have the necessary documentation. We do not accept any documents on soft copy, only on hard copy papers. If you're going to a funeral, make sure that you have the death certificate on hard copy, which is certified. And also if you're traveling for any other reasons as well, which are an emergency, we also will be asking for supporting documentation to ensure that what you are saying is really the truth and that you're traveling for an emergency situation. Also, please make sure that you keep to the regulations of how many people should be in a vehicle. For sedans, make sure that you've got three passengers, no more than that, plus the driver, so it's four people in, in a sedan. And then also the minibuses must also adhere to the number of passengers that should be in their vehicles. Once again, contravening the lockdown rules, but this time in front of the Wabish Bay Urban Constituency Office, where apparently they were told this morning that they were only supposed to register their names at home for food parcels, and it's up and it's only for the informal traders. But people decided to come and queue without practicing social distancing here in Wabish Bay. is that whatever food we are giving, the distribution has not been going on well. What we did, we called some of your litters and we went and stood there. We were trying to sort out a mechanism that will work for us. Now, when you look at the crowd here, because of yesterday's announcement, we are all here from the 10 different constituencies. And we cannot sort out that problem here. We are all mixed here. Even people that already has received food, they are here. Those that are on the list of beneficiaries, some of them are not here. And to make matters worse, some of you who are here, this office, the Commerce Regional Council office, we do not know whether you are on the list as registered to be beneficiaries to benefit are we together mm. so what we propose is to say majority of you are from katutura east and katutura central yeah. Yeah. am i right Kanji. Kanji. Yes. Kanji. Kanji. well and good well and good Kanji. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Kanji. can we listen please we're okay Kanji. Kaji is an individual in the office. Kaji is a counselor in the office. Now even if you are saying Kanji is where or where, Kanji should not be the problem. The food is not for Kanji, the food is for Kanji. don't want to yes. give us the food. So Kanji's office can operate with or without him. Are we together? So what we propose to say is, tomorrow myself, the chief regional officer, tomorrow is Sunday. Yeah, even Sunday we are working anyway, we are here and today is Saturday. 
is it tomorrow or Monday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We can Monday, but there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ah, tomorrow we want to come to the constituents. We want to sort out the issue of the registered beneficiaries. So that when the next consignment of food is coming, we would know who are those people that are Yes, of course, those scenes uh, with the governor was uh, filmed on Saturday when the people mm. protested. She mentions now uh, the councillor, uh, Mr. Kanji, and he's the one who had to, appear, has to appear in court this morning because he allegedly pointed a gun at a citizen who came to his house to ask for to food. Ask for food. Uh, and at least 20, more than 20,000 additional food parcels were by yesterday required just for commerce region. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and I mean, obviously, yes, uh, commerce is obviously the, the one where the people come together. That's why something like that obviously creates force and, 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 and urgency, I would say. But we should not forget about all these 100,000 there in the rural areas, and they've got the same problem, and they've got no voice because they cannot speak to their councillors directly because they don't have access. But we also had a couple of questions uh, coming out of these videos. So um, uh, one was from uh, Shimara Mallet. Do I need a permit to go home on the 1st of May? Oh, yes. uh, on the 1st of May, so that is... Um, uh, Workers' Day. Workers' Day Friday. Uh, you won't need a, a permit necessarily, but you have to get approval because you can only travel through these checkpoints between the, the regions and even within your region if it's for urgent medical mm. uh, reasons uh, there are some other uh, reasons they do uh, allow as well if you have to urgently urgently assist a family member for example exactly, yeah. but you have to go to the police station i suppose the best one is your closest police station mm. explain your situation and and uh, ask for assistance to, to get approval. Otherwise, you might ask at the roadblock and they will tell you yeah. to, to turn back in any case. They, they still allow the regional directors of education and health to issue that. But to be dead honest, I don't know of many people who know that name and that address and where to get hold of them in the right time. So I would always say to approach your police station and find out from there. But, but the most important part is 1st of May obviously still falls 100% in the lockdown yes. uh, time. So. And there was another question from Hermin Vermeulen. Can we drive from Swakop to Vintuk on the 8th of May? So that will be next week. We don't know yet. Unfortunately, it depends on what cabinet is going to decide in terms of how we are going to move from the lockdown we have now mm. and on 5 May, how it will be uh, softened, how the restrictions yeah. will be lifted. Um, so unfortunately, we'll have to, to wait for President Harvey Geingop on that one. Just a correction or apology that one title during the clips un, uh, incorrectly showed the one roadblock as on the way to Swakop, whilst it was Ochi uh, Varongu. But without further ado, uh, a, short, a short while ago, I spoke to our Getu Greg, our journalist, who is doing the rounds in Okahanya today, and here's what he had to say. On the line on Skype, we've got our get to Greg, a senior journalist with a Republican newspaper. He's on in Okahanya at the moment. Uh, good day, our get to. Uh, good morning, Danny. How are you, sir? We are fine here in Vintuk. You paid a quick visit this morning to those two crucial roadblocks outside Okahanya. Of course, one uh, northwards towards Ochivarongo and the other one going westwards towards uh, the coast. In short, how would you summarize the situation there today? Uh, this morning, uh, both of those roadblocks were pretty quiet, but uh, the situation is well in order. Um, you can see that the police and the NDF are deployed and settled in already. The procedures work uh, smoothly. Uh, as soon as the drivers stop, they are asked to get out and a little bit of screening is done and 
uh, asked about their travel history, if they have any symptoms, uh, hand sanitizer is used, and uh, in general, everything everything is working smoothly at the moment. The traffic volumes is not uh, too much either. I'll get to tell us where are you exactly now at uh, the moment, and what have you seen and experienced uh, else in Okahania this morning? Well, uh, right now I'm at uh, uh, J.G. van der Bat Secondary School uh, here in Okahania. And uh, some of the parents have been uh, coming to the school this morning to collect uh, materials, uh, printed out sheets of uh, schoolwork materials uh, for their kids. Today is the turn of the grade 10 students. The school has divided up uh, one grade at a time, so parents from a different grade will be visiting the school and at the gate uh, they uh, uh, get hand sanitizer also the numbers of parents that are allowed to enter at any one time is limited uh, but once they are inside there are also queues where they stand and then collect the material to take home to their kids because uh, I spoke to some of the school's uh, representatives and officials and the majority of the kids who go to school here just don't have access to electronic equipment, which uh, excludes them, whether it be from WhatsApp or uh, television or any of the e-learning platforms. So the school is trying its best to supplement uh, those opportunities with printed materials, but they've also created WhatsApp uh, lines and um, they are trying to share information as best they can. Our ghetto, we often see in many places, not only Vintuk, a problem still with social distancing. There at the school, are people properly distancing themselves from each other with a meter and a half or, or even more? And is the situation in, in general calm? Uh, what is uh, the, the, the feelings of, of the parents uh, as well? Are they positive about this whole new way of education we must start? Well, uh, the parents are definitely lending what support they can. The feeling is generally calm, although there are frustrations that build up, but uh, people try and, and, and make the best of it. In terms of social distancing, I've seen uh, different places in the town, even at some of the shops I've visited. Uh, it is practiced uh, social distancing. People are taking it seriously. And the queues, you can see that there's a about a meter between each uh, person who's waiting in the queue. So uh, we don't see a lot of the drumming together and the clustering of people that we might have been used to in the times before COVID-19 came to the Namibian shores. I'll get to thank you very much and all the best with uh, the rest of your day in Okanya and safe travel back to Ventuk. Thank you very much. You guys also be safe there. Goodbye. That was our get to Greg, senior journalist working for Republican newspaper, uh, newspaper speaking from Okania. From positive to hear that a lot of schools are giving uh, mm. work in printed form out to, to learners, so that's very good. Just in, I just saw now, we were speaking about the whole unclarity still about wage and salary subsidies, apparently at three o'clock this afternoon, Social Security Commission is going to announce all those details. Mm. So I think if you're interested in that, uh, you must stay uh, up to date with the latest news uh, this afternoon. Uh, Frank, two questions here, which I'll throw your way once mm -hmm. again. Can I travel from one zone to another to pay my workers and take food for them? That's from Harold Gossip. And it sounds like he's a farmer. And mm. as far as I know, he's allowed to do that. If he's a farmer, he's definitely allowed to do that. But he must still get the, the permit. I think that's where people misunderstand. The fact that I'm, I've got a pharmacy doesn't automatically entitle me to open the pharmacy. You have to have the certificate, then you can open it. It's just the, uh, just a way in which you control it so much more easily because the police obviously can't always be the judge of things at that, uh, that each and every occasion. So, yes, sure, if you're a farmer, you're allowed to bring them the necessary goods and, uh, so that they can survive. Uh, Sean Carew, I think he's being very optimistic and he's asking, can't we end the lockdown Thursday evening already? 
23, 59 before, uh, in other words, before the long weekend starts on, on Friday uh, is a public holiday and obviously uh, Monday. Sean, I think you are a bit out of luck with that one. No, I think, uh, let's face it, uh, part of the reason why it was extended to the 4th was exactly to make sure that you stay at home. Not because somebody wants to spoil a holiday, I'm sure they've got better things to do because at the end of the day politicians run a country and they have to make sure that we all have an income and that we all get uh, things in, in a row. So, so uh, to, there's no idea to spoil a holiday. It's simply to make sure that people don't move around. And that's the only, I mean, typically long holidays or uh, long weekends are exactly where people start moving around and, and they go into the supermarkets and they go to the beach together and, and, and there are a million things to be done. Yeah, the old normal has gone forever it's probably. Gone. So please don't try to take a normal uh, long weekend. Be, the police is going to take action against you, probably fine or even yeah, and the thing maybe is, worse. Yeah, and the thing is, you'll be agitated because you'll be turned away at a roadblock which is 40 kilometers down your line, or like we saw in Divundu, imagine coming from Katima all the way to Divundu just to find out that you've got to turn around. I mean, you've, you've basically you know, spent petrol for, for 500 kilometers. So just use common sense. It, it's not worth it. Stay home and stay safe. That's the mm. short and the long of it. Mm. In our interview today, uh, we are focusing on total Namibia. And Frank last week uh, spoke to uh, Philippus Shimwaningi. He's total Namibia's manager for health, safety, security, environment and quality. Hi, welcome back. As you can see, I'm not alone in the studio. With me is Mr. Philippus, and now I must be careful, Chimwaningi. That's, That's right. correct. That's correct. Okay, yeah. welcome in our studio. Um, Thank you. Philippus is of uh, Total Namibia. He's responsible for health, safety, and quality, which among the fuel companies is quite a big issue always. Um, I think uh, you still, just as in the years gone past, you spend a lot of time and energy on this. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. So welcome here. Um, obviously, we don't have you here simply to hear of, of safety and quality this time or safety as such and health. Um, we're here to find out uh, you apparently decided to help people out in the time of COVID-19. That's correct. So what is it that you've done so far? Um, you know, as Total is uh, one of the corporate citizens uh, in the country. We have uh, had the call of the president um, f uh, to assist the government halfway. So we, we decided as Total Namibia to, um, to, to give a mode of sponsorship mm -hmm. to, the, to the Ministry of Health and Social Service um, to the value of uh, 150,000 Namibian dollars. Which is which is in uh, uh, petrol and, and diesel, oh, okay. not as in cash. <laughs> okay, okay, you so know? it's in kind. Yes, yes. So um, uh, this um, uh, we, we we trust that this sponsorship will go a long way in assisting the government in terms of as we all see the ambulances mm. are running each and every day. Mm. Um, uh, those guys are not sleeping twenty four hours. They are on the road uh, as soon as as soon as they receive the call. Uh, they are out there um, to, to, to rescue yeah. people's yeah. lives. So we thought it would be ideal that we assist uh, from the fuel supply point of view. So, so is this only for ambulances or is this for all emergency services? So, so basically how the mode of sponsorship works is that uh, we've uh, provided uh, 15 um, uh, voucher cards which uh, the, the is, uh, it depends on the ministry itself, uh, mm. whether it's an ambulance or it's a car that is being oh, used. Oh, so they allocated to the They allocated vehicle. to the vehicles, yes, that's correct, um, in terms of combating um, the, the, the virus. So uh, the, what the ministry will do normally, they will allocate these uh, mm. cuts to the responsible vehicles, drivers, so that uh, as soon as they get to the service station, they give this card, they are being... Oh, so it's actually a total them. fuel card which has been loaded with, let's say, 10,000 litres. That's correct. You just said it well. It's $10,000 um, uh, okay. on, on each uh, total card. That's okay. correct, yes. And then it's for them to allocate. Um, so to whom have you ha handed it over? Uh, we have handed it over uh, to the Jupiter uh, Minister, 
okay. of health. Of health, that's correct. Okay, so, yes. okay. so it's really in there. Uh, it's for them to decide where exactly they want to use it. I, I can already um, um, uh, say it out here that um, the, the ministry has revert back to us mm. with a list of vehicles and, um, and I, 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 we have o of opinion that it's going to be used to the good use of the ministry in terms of combating Okay, so violence. it will essentially be in the Ministry of That's Health correct. at the end of the day. That's correct. Yeah, and this is quite important because 150,000 the other day was not worth as much as it is now, now that the fuel prices have actually sunk, is it not? That's correct. <laughs> yeah, so That's it's correct. gone up yes. a bit. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, it's good to hear that yes. uh, there are other companies. Uh, but while we've got you here um, and you are uh, basically responsible for safety and health, how does Total handle it uh, within uh, Total's own offices? Uh, uh, Total uh, is very much um, uh, committed when it comes to health and safety. They, they actually, it's, it's, it's the key to business. So we can operate without health and safety. So um, when this uh, call was made in terms of this uh, pandemic, we have taken it very serious to, uh, to, to call out our BCP plan um, so that it, uh, it is uh, put to exercise. So what is basically happening is that our staff uh, operating from home. Okay. Uh, yes, we have we have actually uh, restricted um, uh, movements to the office in terms of um, limiting the number to to, to say okay. to five people per office. Uh, and what we've done is that we have also looked at our terminals, whereby mm. we have splitted our teams in two groups. So basically, Group A, uh, so to speak, will be off this week, and oh, Group okay. B is on. So, so, so we don't. We just um, uh, um, just make exercise sure the social distancing. People. That's yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's how serious it was taken. Definitely, we 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 are applying all the safety measures that are put in place. The sanitizing of hands. Uh, we issued sanitizers to our to our um, employees. Uh, we also mm -hmm. uh, go as far as uh, go doing um, more awareness um, and, uh, and, and and so forth. So, mm -hmm. The guys are well equipped in terms of. Um, so I suppose that the virus. depots where the trucks come in and out, you are also following procedures there in terms of uh, sanitizing and whatever. That's correct. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yes. well done, and uh, thank you for for that little support. Well, little support, little big support in the country. Uh, every everyone is trying to do a small little part, and as we can hear, total is basically given product out at the value of 150,000 Namibia dollar towards uh, supporting the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Thank you very much for coming into the studio. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Very important also that corporates and business support our government's effort. If, mm. if you want to tell us what your Business, even a small business is doing, uh, tell us uh, on Facebook or anywhere, get the message to us and we'll do our best to share it as well uh, on our platforms. Frank, uh, another question came in very similar to, to a lot of questions that has been asked today. Yeah, I think this is possibly the result of somebody having tuned in a bit later. It's uh, Narat Ayona, um, and he wants to know, is the lockdown coming to a complete end on the 5th of May, or are we still going to f uh, follow minor lockdown uh, procedures? Yes, that is the uh, announcement we are expecting from government, hopefully even by tomorrow. I don't think they'll be ready to do it today, mm -hmm. today yet, but hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday, I would personally think at the latest yeah. um, so uh, but I think as well that our government will do it in phases and um, but important thing is to get the economy going again we always end with a just a positive couple of positive images and uh, today we have got two of them uh, for you now the south had very nice rain yes, over the sir. weekend a lot of those parts in the south had very little rain so far. Anna Simon sent this photograph and it was taken a Friday morning in Kietman's Whip. There's that well known, I think it's the Enkia Church there yeah, in Kietman's Whip, and it shows how nice and wet the streets are. There's our WhatsApp number as well 0811 7010. 
please share your positive images and messages with us via WhatsApp. And then the next one, people, uh, people usually love kids. This little girl's name is Nicole Kutsia. Just look at that <laughs> face, Frank. She was photographed by Elmi Nico. And the question was, where is my food? When I'm going to get <laughs> my <laughs> little bears. food? Um, but yes, even on a strict uh, on a strict sense, that's what a lot of Namibians yeah. are asking at the moment. When are we going to get our food assistance? Yeah, especially because so much was promised. So let's hope that this is finally getting on the way. I mean. Yeah, there, there should be no reason for anybody to die of hunger, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a simple thing. We simply need to get our backs up from the chairs and get it done. And unfortunately, we're dependent on the government there, so yeah, my appeal would be to the government to actually stay true to their word. Thank you, for, uh, Frank. Thank you very much. You, we won't see you in this show the rest of the week, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah. I think you'll probably be only back after the lo uh, long after weekend. The long weekend yeah. uh, what's your, I think, your most important message to, to Namibians for today? I think the most important part is remain at home for the moment. Uh, the, the, the sooner we have that discipline going, uh, the better are the chances of them lifting this lockdown. And we all want it lifted. Make no mistake, I'm quite sure our government actually wants it lifted as well. So let's do our part in making sure that it can happen. That really is the important part. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Remember, stay, stay home, like Frank said. Stay uh, safe. Keep your social distancing. Very important, don't uh, spread any kind of virus, not only COVID-19 and don't spread any false news. Join us again tomorrow at one o'clock for another update by Namibia Media Links.